there's of course a national epidemic taking place related to opioids and in fact the epidemic is so great that there are reports now that there are at least 80 opioid related overdoses a day which is <coughs> astounding so we're going to talk today with you dr marone a certified pain and addiction recovery specialist and david humes whose son passed away from an accidental overdose at the very young age of 24. How are you both today? Doing Fine, well, thank you. thank you. Dr. Marone, why has there been such an increase in opioid-related overdoses in society? In the last 15 years, providers have tried to uh, treat chronic pain by increasing the prescribing of opioid pain medicines. That has been paralleled with prescription opioid abuse, and when that gets out of hand, people have been dying of opioid overdose death. And recently, in the last three years, heroin has tripled in America, and the people who are involved in substance use disorder with prescription medicine have no fear. There's a transparent effort to just move right over to heroin and that's where the spike in death is coming because the heroin has been laced with synthetic drugs like fentanyl and fentanyl family drugs. It's so critical we need to move the medicine for reversing these opioid overdose deaths into the homes. We need to get them in the homes because it's, we don't have enough time to treat them in the hospitals. Uh, for, for treating the overdoses? Yes, exactly. Okay, but the, the fact is that you can say the overdoses are occurring as a result of pain treatment. An increase in the abuse of medicine that has been originally prescribed for pain medicine, correct. Now what can be done to slow down the, the public health impact of this? The first thing we can do is try to stop the overdose deaths. If we move to stop the deaths by moving the medicine to reverse the opioid overdose deaths into the homes. This is one of the naloxone family products that this little spray can go up the nose and it gives you the medicine to reverse the opioid overdose death. Then we get the people to treatment and recovery, counseling and other stability medication. From there, it, it, it's, it's a system problem. We need help in the system. Okay, and David, you had a personal experience and a very unfortunate personal experience. Tell us a little bit about that quickly. Yes, as you mentioned, uh, this is a photograph of my son Greg, and he died in May of 2012 of an accidental heroin overdose. Uh, he was a great kid, AP student, he was a good athlete, but he did what a lot of young people are wired to do. Uh, he experimented with drugs and it led him up the chain till eventually he used heroin and got addicted to it. Uh, after a period of time he decided he didn't want to be lead that kind of life and he gained sobriety. He had been sober for 17 months and he was out with some friends one night and ran into some running mates and unfortunately part of the disease of addiction is relapse. Relapse is possible. He made a decision that night that proved to be fatal. He went with the old running mates um, he used heroin with them, he overdosed. Those people found him overdosed, they lifted him up, they put him in his car, they drove him to a local hospital, and they simply walked away. They didn't, they didn't honk the horn, they didn't knock on the door of the emergency room, they didn't call, leave and call 911 to try and get him help. Yeah. And in the, in the aftermath of his death, two days later, I spoke with the investigating detective and he said, if we had an I'm on one Good Samaritan law or a naloxone law, your son might very well be alive today. So I see. Now, Dr. Marone, can you tell me what advice could you give to families who have a loved one who's addicted? If you know that your loved one is addicted, you have to have naloxone in the home. You can't count on the system reversing. So find a provider or work with a standing order and a local pharmacist 
to secure that medicine, naloxone, and keep it at home, and then get them into treatment, get them counseling, and that's the two steps. It's a system. Okay. And uh, where can people get more information about uh, addiction and how to handle it? Uh, they can go to a website, getnaloxonenow.org, and in whatever state they may be, they can go to their local health and social services website and get information. And there's also a national organization, shatterproof.org, where they can get some of this information. The shatterproof.org, that's a website? Correct, yes. Okay. Uh, so, therefore, I'm just going to wrap up here. But they can go to Get Naloxone as one web address and shatterproof.com. Dot org. Dot org. I'm right. glad you corrected that. Is the Get Naloxone dot org? Correct. So they're both dot org? Correct. Okay, and that will allow people to get more information about how to handle this situation. Absolutely. All right, well, I thank both of you for sharing this information with my Health Power audience, and I'm sure they need it, and that will help them to live uh, healthier lives. Thank you. Thank you for having us.